It's Victoria, and I've got to say the best running advice I had ever gotten from Michael Arnstein, aka the fruitarian, my husband, um, is to eat. Don't forget to eat while you're running. While you're running, bring food with you. Today I didn't think I needed to eat because I ate last night late. It was cooked food, and I ate last night, and I didn't feel like eating this morning. I did some plyometrics with kettlebell swings, and it was like a 12-minute fast workout. And I figured my stomach was still not empty enough to want to eat anything. And I didn't know how fruit would go after a meal, so I didn't want to have a problem. I really didn't think I was going to go that far today. I ended up 10 miles in. And by the seventh mile, by the seventh, no, I'd say by the sixth mile, I had water with me. That was great. But by the sixth mile, I started to feel my legs lose their grip. You know, they, they didn't have the power that they had in the beginning of the run. And you can see how that just feels. You could see how it feels when you're running and you, you're, you're more efficient as a runner. And when I was running with Michael two years ago and I was training for an ultra, in the beginning stages, I had dates on me. And he said a half hour into the run, Vicky, eat your dates. And I said, eat them now. No, I'll save them for like an hour and a half. He said, no, don't you dare wait an hour and a half to eat your dates. And I said, yeah, but what's the big deal? What's the difference? And he said, don't wait. Because what will happen is, and he's so right, this it happens all the time to people. They crash and burn, crash and burn. Uh, especially if it's like an hour run, out, a little more than an hour run. What happens is you go dark. Your brain goes a little dark. You go a little negative, and you can't get out of it. That's the problem. You can't get out of that negative state. And it's not just it's not just mental. It's physical. Like the glucose just leaves you. So what I did by mile seven was I went to this uh, little market, this like tiny supermarket, and they had little packets of sugar in the raw, and I poured it inside some water and. It still didn't do the trick, you know, it wasn't enough. There were two packets and a small bottle of water, and um, it, it helped a little bit. It got me home. I had to run another three miles. So, you know, it works, but it's not optimal. You really can't wait. You can't wait. You have to eat while you run. It is so key. And the best advice I got from Dr. Graham about running was after a run, within the first 15 minutes, don't wait to eat. Just, don't even wait till you're hungry. Just eat. Get glucose in your blood. I remember I was at Health and Fitness Week, or it was Culinary Skills Week, and I went for, for a run. I think it was a two-hour run. I got back, and I wanted to hear his lecture, and he said, go eat something. And I said, but I'm not really hungry. He said, don't wait till you're hungry. He said, you recover so much quicker if you get the glucose in, you know, right after a run. So, really good advice for runners. Uh, or any type of exercise that you want to do that's long distance, endurance. Um, I really believe that, you know, having dates on you is a lifesaver. You never know who else you might help. Maybe you're running with somebody, maybe you run into a problem like I once did. Somebody was fainting and ended up, I had my little stash of dates on me. Um, really easy to get dates. You can go to any supermarket and get dates. And um, if there's any other type of fruit, that you find convenient, a dried fruit, or maybe raisins that you want to take with you, then, you know, by all means, take those with you. I really believe in, um, in keeping, you know, I used to think in keeping, um, you know, food with you. Or, and I didn't have money either, by the way, so I couldn't buy anything at the market. That was a food. I would have gotten a banana. But um, I really think that it's very important to um, not feel like, oh, my God, I don't want those calories because I used to think that way when I first started running. I, I used to say, oh, there's a hundred calories in each goo gel. Oh my God, what's the point of running? If I'm not going to get those calories burned, I'm just going to eat anyway. Wrong, wrong, wrong. I used to eat maybe 12 dates during a run and I never gained weight. So that's BS. You want to get your body efficient. You want to be an efficient runner. And the only way to be an efficient runner is to get the right fuel. The cleanest fuel to eat is fruit. Um, anything after that would be carbohydrates, but you really want the cleanest fruit, food possible to go through your body and, you know, have some glucose in your blood. And hydration is very key. If the fruit doesn't have any water in it, add more. 
add more water. If it has water in it, add water, but don't add that much more water. You want your electrolytes to be kind of balanced. And I gotta say, when I was at Boston this year, it was pretty hot outside, and I just felt very good having dates until a certain mile. I don't know what happened to me, but I was really, really hot, and I ended up having Gatorade, and I'll tell you, that worked. So, whatever it is you have to take, don't be a purist, you know. If you're out there running, you having a problem, really get to the feeling that you could be saved if you have some fruit or if you have some food. And don't worry about the calories and gaining weight. That won't happen. All right? You know, I really believe that if you're going to have a certain amount of calories, your body will kind of hit a point where it's kind of used to that many calories. So whether you have them in the morning or have them in the afternoon or at night, it doesn't matter. It's all going to pan balance out in the end, and you're just going to feel like uh, you'll know when your body's done. All right? Yeah, will you overeat sometimes? Sure you will. Big deal. And all those purists out there that, oh, somebody just mentioned on my last video, mint is an 811. I'm, mint is an 801010. Neither is air. But I'm going to take some in, by the way. I'm not going to be a purist about stupid things. And as far as I know, there's no 811 policeman or some security guard watching over me every time I eat, okay? I know what to do. And you all know what to do. Just do things the way you want to do them. You don't need to explain it to anybody. Just keep eating the way you want to eat. If you feel good the way you're eating, enjoy yourself, okay? If you're starting to feel a little bit guilty and have, like, emotional problems with eating meat and, and uh, any animal products, then don't. And don't anymore. If you're, if, you're, if you're not there yet, you're not there yet. You know, don't force yourself to do anything because everybody tells you to. Do what you think is right. Do what you feel is right. You have nobody to explain your life to. You have nobody to talk to about what you're putting in your mouth. End of story. No more than you have to talk about your sexuality with anybody either. You don't have to talk about anything you don't want to talk about. Ever. You know why? Because it's your life. And anybody who writes comments on what I should be doing with my life, really? I'm not interested. Not interested at all. I'm 43 years old. I've kind of made my choices, all right? You guys can make your choice. You guys can do whatever you want. I'm giving running advice, running tips from the best runners in the world that I've spoken to. One of them happened to be my husband, and I gotta say, it's all free. It's all here for you right now. Want to make dumb comments afterwards? Delete, delete, delete. That's all I'm gonna do. I might just ban you from watching my, my uh, stuff. So, it's up to you if you want to write them, but not interested. Take care. Bye-bye.